free ballin', and I'm, I'm free. <laughs> She's a good girl. Uh-huh. Loves her mama. Love Jesus. Uh-huh. And America too. And I'm free. I'm free ballin', ballin', <laughs> and I'm free. What up, though? It's your boy Easy. Welcome back to Wilbur Heavyweights. I'm joined by my man Spin More Rex. Oh, yeah, baby. Coming right from the Better Ray Morgan Studios. <laughs> we got a special guest in this bitch. We got the one, the only, the, the Maddie MF and Miller in this bitch <laughs> oh, between the heavyweights. What's going on? What up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> oh, baby, are you going on the road? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Maddie. You're so welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for that. having me. Of course. Anytime. It's a pleasure. Anytime. It's our pleasure. Pleasure's all ours. It really is. Yeah, Even though you're the boss now, so you're gonna fucking. I was say, yeah, be careful when you're talking to me. Yeah, chill. Sorry. Uh, chill chill sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Don't you. Don't call her a sir, dude. Oh, uh, fuck <laughs> it. It's ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> It's ma'am. It's ma'am. <laughs> that poor fucking <laughs> That poor fucking GameStop worker, dude. You know, making like $9 an hour. It's oh ma'am. <laughs> it's just like, leave it alone, lady. Fuck it. <laughs> Yo, that video is so oh. fucking funny, man. Like, I don't have anything against, like, People doing what they love to do, but that video is fucking that hilarious. Shit is funny, dude. This fucking bitch with like broad ass shoulders. Yeah. Oh. Hey, what are you trying there. to say about broad shoulders? No, no, not like that chick. She, I mean, like, she was um. She's uh, what easy. Let's see how you get. Let's see going. how you get through this. A transitional. <laughs> Choke through it. A Come transitional on, you player. This. Transitional player, yeah, G League, you know, two way player. <laughs> Shit, fucking deltoids bigger than spins. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad, it's, it's bad. Bad. <laughs> Wow, Jesus, dude. Sorry, man. Wow, wow, wow. She got a half chub after she did it. <laughs> Ma'am, I feel something pressing up against <laughs> Ma'am, I can see your dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was that's one of the best videos of all time. That shit blew up. Hopefully, she got some, you know. Some royalties from that shit, because that shit was everywhere. <laughs> was it branded? Uh, probably not. Probably no brands. I I'm, don't sure, I'm sure Barst will find a way to fucking... Yeah, she probably got some it. content, I'm sure. Content. Should have made t-shirts. It's ma'am. It's ma'am. I'd buy one. I, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rock that bitch. It's ma'am. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would start saying that when somebody's... Somebody tells me, like, move in the bar. So I'm like, oh, man. It's ma'am. <laughs> see, see how they feel. All right. Be like, yeah, you look pretty cute too. Smack him on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham left off three ballots for for rookie of the year. I don't want to take this until like where like where it's been. I feel like everyone's been looking like bitchy. You know what I'm saying like just like like mm-hmm. crybaby ish. I want to like actually kind of like break down why Scotty got it. I was looking at stat Scotty. News. Yeah, Scotty doesn't know. Scotty Barnes. Scotty way. too hotty. I will say congratulations. I also will say this too about the rookie year for NBA this year. Super fucking competitive. Like. Yeah, I mean, he deserves it. You know, it's not yeah. It's not like, oh, he had a terrible year. He's a terrible player. He's a good player. He had a good year. You know, but. He was rookie of the month like one time. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, and, and, and here's like, this is straight oh. from Stat Muse. <laughs> Thanks, Spence. <laughs> this is straight from Stat Muse out of their verified like Twitter account. Uh, Scotty Brown's Rookie of the Year amongst, well, this is at the time he was a finalist, but we know now he's Rookie of the Year. But th- these are the stats he led the league in, or, or for, in, terms, in terms of rookies, I should say. P-E-R. Player efficiency rating. Stop looking. I know what that means. I'm okay. not looking at nothing. BPM. You, you scribbled out of it. BPM. Me. Oh, BPM. What would that mean? Uh, bitches per minute. <laughs> All right. VORP. VORP. Victories over roles played. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> WS, I mean, that's... You want to take a stab, Maddie? Uh, wait, you're asking me these Yeah, th- these are the statistics. Like, this is our rookie of the year, right? Like, this, he's like, he's the outright voted rookie of the year. The only stats he led the rookies in was PER, WS, B... I'll tell you what they are down the line, but I'm just... I want to read them off because these are all, like, advanced fucking statistics. Okay. Metrics. And it's like, this is where they decide the rookie of the year of based off of, it seems as if, because this is what he's leading in. Kind of a fucking joke. PER's player efficiency rating, like you said. Win shares. 
BPM, that's his plus minus throughout the game. The sure. B's for the box. Vorp, box. value over replacement player. Value over replacement yeah. player. Yeah. But for me, the, my whole beef is, the reason why I put this on here is like, like again, congratulations, Scotty Barnes. I'm not trying to shit on him. But like, these are like those fucking I like. Am. Unless he likes it. These are like <laughs> the. <laughs> Some people are into that. Some Odell Beckham. Yeah, some ODB some, shit. A, a Cleveland Steamer. <laughs> a little, oh a little Cleveland Steamer action. <laughs> anyways, anyways, Scotty Barnes. So my whole beef with this is these advanced metrics is like, cool, they could be a thing and he could lead in them, but the things like value over replacement player is like a completely hypothetical fucking set. Yes. So like, like, it's like, this is your value versus the guys it would ever replace you, but like, it's hypothetical as fuck. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, my problem with Scotty Barnes winning... Rookie of the year is that one, he's only been rookie of the month like one time. Yes. Mm. Two, he's always been number three in all of the rankings until he yeah. won last month because that was the only month that he won rookie of the year. It was a year. robbery of a and month. And it was too. a split month. They did yeah. both months combined. Um, and that was the only time that he's won that period, the entire season. He's always trailed as like the number three. And where there is the conversation about Evan Mobley not winning, yeah. and then put mm -hmm. Caden number three, yeah, yeah. and not number even three? beyond, not even beyond three ballots, right? There are three ballots where he wasn't even voted for at all, which is just blasphemy, mind blowing. Yeah, and I was talking to Terry a little bit like earlier in the morning, and this is after your guys' show, but he was like, Terry. even when he, even though he Terry. writes and like votes and shit like that, he's like, I'm never gonna watch Sacramento Kings game. I was like, that's fair. Like, I wouldn't want to watch the Sacramento Kings either, but. I would say the Pistons are like a more respectable franchise than the fucking Kings. Like we actually have oh, a championship sure. to yeah. share on our resume, you know? Like Absolutely. That's got to be it. That's the only reason Cade could be third. It's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just fucking crazy to me. When And I like the argument that people have been putting out there. I mean, Adam said it on the show this morning. Just uh, the fact that if you were to go back and do the draft again, who would you pick number one? Still Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham. Still, yes. still Cade Cunningham. Yeah. yeah it's, That's my problem. Yeah. My beef uh, at this point, too, is, like, looking at this and knowing the Kevin Pelton. Shout out to all the clowns in the world. Not not really fuck you guys. But <laughs> just these advanced metrics, bro, they're just fucking, like, like again, like, they're hypothetical shits. Like, the wins above replacement, fuck that. Like, that's, again, hypothetical as fuck. Plus, minus, I'll give you that. But ultimately, that's, like, a fucking, like, team thing, too. Like, the team's doing well on the court. You're going to have right. a good plus, minus. Win shares, even that's kind of hypothetical because you're trying to find a mathematical way to divide, like, who gets, you know. Yeah. I guess the most credit for the win in terms of value, but I don't know, man. They're all take these, them off the team and they're still winning. Yeah, like these advanced metrics is getting a little, a little too fucking crazy. Like they shouldn't hold this much fucking credit when it comes to like voting for awards like this because one, like again, they're just fucking hypothetical ass fucking numbers. I respect how they formulated them and the person who sat down and thought and loved the game enough to come up with this stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's fucking like it's 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 bullshit. But do they actually use those metrics to? If That's what they say, well, right? This, yeah. So when we did, when they were going through and doing the NFL awards and they uh, were talking about MVP, I don't know if you heard our conversation on the morning show one day. One of the the people that has a vote for MVP said that he would not vote for Aaron Rodgers because he thought he was a big jerk. Yep. Yeah. Like, that, are yeah, you that was kidding one me? Writer, yeah. yeah. You have completely discredited any vote that any person has now because you're not voting for this person because you think he's a jerk. All season awards... And stuff like that, like MVP, Rookie of the Year, stuff like that should be voted on by the players and the coaches. I yes, agree. It I shouldn't. Agree. I, I mean, I respect writers. You know, you do that. Yeah, but, but game you're not, recognizes yeah, game. Yeah, game recognizes yeah. the game. You're not going against these guys every night. You have, like I said on our last pod, you had fucking Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant. Giannis Antetokounmpo, all yes. these guys coming out, DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan saying, this guy, Cade's a boss. Yeah. Cade is it. He is the real deal. And if you've got the, the highest tier of players saying that this guy's the best. And wh he was, what, is, number six on the top 25 yeah, players? Yes. Or yeah, yeah. yeah, top 25 players under yep. 20. Under or 25. Under 25. Yeah. For Con Conner, did you guys see that? This guy had, like, fucking, like, three 28-year-olds in his <laughs> top five under 25. Yeah, <laughs> like, makes sense. Yeah, I was but like, all right. who wasn't on that list? All Scotty, the, Barnes yeah, Scotty Barnes or Evan Mobley. Uh, yeah, kind of fucking... <laughs> You that one was at least a five. Uh, 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 it was that Sprite. You were no. trying is, to do the Sprite, sprite challenge, the sprite. bro. It is the Sprite. It definitely <laughs> was the Sprite. We are stuck in here with that fucking stank. It's, you you know, it's just chicken salad. Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't smell too bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
like you said, like where you hold these stats as, like they shouldn't be held to this high regard. Where this guy's literally fucking taking the award because of it. Yes, it's literally the only stats he like led the league in. And, and I get he had his like moments throughout the season where I think there was one. Point. I'm not discrediting him at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, He's an amazing close. player. Yeah, it's just meh. Scotty Barnes averaged in the uh, month, the last month of the year when he won Rookie of the Month. Yeah, what Cade averaged on the year. Yeah, dude. So if that gets him rookie of the month, why would averaging that on the year not get you rookie of the year? Right. Which, by the way, didn't didn't Kate average like twenty four and, and five and five? Yes, he had a much better and month. Then he didn't give. He had a much better year. month. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just stupid. It's uh, Nick Wright said like we live in a game uh, day and age where team Winning. success yeah. means more in the rookie of the year yeah. race than it does in the MVP race. Yeah, it blows my fucking mind. Like, Which is yeah, but at the end of the day, the fact that he didn't win. Is almost better for him. Oh yeah, yeah, I think it is. Put that chip on the shoulder. Exactly. Give him, give him more. Because everybody knows. Yeah. Like yeah. again, game recognizes game. Oh, yeah. Like the other, the other players in the NBA know who they're playing against, and that's yeah. all that really matters. And sometimes rookie of the year, you know, doesn't really matter because you got like fucking Tyreek Evans won rookie of the year. Michael Kidd Gilchrist won rookie of the year. You know, mm-hmm. these guys aren't even in the league anymore. Michael mm-hmm. Kidd Gilchrist might be, but it's it's like. Or not Michael K- Gilchrist, Michael, uh, Michael like Carter that. Williams. Michael Carter Williams, yeah, yeah, yeah one rookie of the year, and it's like some gypsy in that yeah, there. you know, some <laughs> some's going on, but no, it's like the chicken salad that <laughs> that doesn't yeah, that doesn't really equate to being a good player. It doesn't it, it equates to what you did your first year, no. and but what pisses me off is that it has never been about team success. It has never been about oh Raptors made the playoffs, they're in the playoffs, look at that. That shit, that shit doesn't matter. It's rookie of the year. It's which rookie had the best year, mm-hmm. not who's who's on the best team. If you put Kate on the Raptors, they're a better fucking team. Yeah. Yep. If you take Evan Mobley or uh, Scotty Barnes off the Raptors and put Kate on the Raptors, they're a better team. Oh, for sure. And it's just uh, and it pisses yeah. me off. It's, it's, it's disrespect. Yeah, and it, that's I think. What, yeah, that's why I don't like about it. Yeah. yeah, but also, like, Cade came out and said it earlier in the year, and he said, if I don't win the award, it's not a big deal. It's just an award. Like, I know who I am. Yeah. And then later on is when he got all almost not upset about it. I don't think he was ever upset about it, but he was like, dang, I know I should be winning this award. Like, why aren't they giving it yeah. to me? Yes. But that's when he bought into Detroit. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that's the moment that he bought into Detroit. Detroit versus and everybody. He said Detroit yeah. versus everybody. He saw a tweet. Yeah. And I think he saw everybody, like, Detroit's got his back, mm-hmm. and I think it's, that's created a, a bond that's kind of unbreakable right now. So I think that was an amazing thing that came out of him not winning. Yeah. But, like, I think it's better for our franchise for sure. Yeah, and in a way, too, it comes back to how he's, like, a perfect fit here because, like, any other guy, and I'm not trying to disrespect. I mean, I did say fuck Jalen Green a couple times. Fuck but Jalen Green. <laughs> like, we're so lucky that he is, like, mature as he is because if, if we got a guy who was worried about his brand, more than he was on on the court, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And like yeah. fucking like we'd be fucked because he'd be like, Oh my god, like I'm playing for Detroit, I put up all these numbers and I still got no respect. I need to get the fuck out of here as soon as I can so I can right. make, make more more money in commercials and doing all this other shit. Where Cade don't give a fuck. Cade wants the ball. Yes. Yeah. Cade wants to like he get He cares get about the his yeah. game. He cares about where he's gonna go. Not where he's gonna go, but how far in his career he's yes. gonna go. Yeah. Um and he's he's phenomenal. He's I'm excited man. to see Oh, I'm Cade kind of him. Oh, he carries himself so well. Like to think he's twenty years old. Yeah, he's very, is very insane. Cure auto insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's cure auto insurance. Those commercials. Whole are trash. financial. Those commercials are trash. By the way, I mean, Cade. Uh, the, the cure auto insurance commercials. Go to hands with him. I don't think I've ever seen one. They're like real scripted, real bad. It's like, oh, see, like that's one. Well, he's not used to it's doing cringe. that yet. No, but even the ones with like Rick Mahorn are 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 bad. bad. To be honest, so it, it, I feel like. I don't know if they did it by design because it's almost become like its own thing. Yeah. And we talk about QR insurance because the commercials are so bad. Like, it's funny. Yeah. Right. I don't know if they meant, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It was like they by design. Is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, by oh, design, I'm their gonna... commercials suck. Yeah. Because like, yeah, we can laugh at them. Like, okay. Like, we, I think they meant to be like a serious commercial and we're just like fucking like this commercial is hilarious. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Hey, man, but real quick, I, I was looking at a list of rates and this is this wasn't in prep, Spencer. I apologize. It's not like we actually prep anyway. But <laughs> so, like, we free ballin', free ballin', free ballin', ballin and free ballin'. And all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are Troy Weaver. <coughs> we want to rebuild the Pistons towards championship level. Yeah. What kind of moves you making this off season to rebuild the Pistons franchise? It depends who we draft. I mean, if we draft one of the power forwards, we'll probably have to sign it too. 
If unless you think Hammy can step up, be that two guard. If you think one of those guys, you think Frank Jackson is going to be that guy of the future. But if not, like you're talking about Victor Oladipo, I don't really know about Victor Oladipo. He's getting older. He's obviously injury prone. Mm-hmm. He's going to demand a certain amount of money. But if you can get any of these guys on a, on a short term contract, that's not going to cost you too much. That you can bring in, you can fill in, you can play well. I wouldn't be that mad about it. I wouldn't be mad about Victor Oladipo, even though he'll probably get injured. I don't want Andre Drummond. You're talking about that. I want no, Mitchell that, Robinson. Yeah. Why? Why not? Andre is a piece, though. Andre is uh He was not going to cost you much. And they're done that. Yeah. But, but when we you tried to go do back it before, to your ex. we tried centering him. <laughs> we tried centering the team around him. And yeah. That's definitely not the case this time around. But still. Yeah, but, but I fear bringing him back means that he thinks that he owns the team again because he was there and he is the vet. Whereas right now we're trying to build a team around Cade Cunningham, which is the move. And he's like, he doesn't fit the Pistons today, today ever. Like his his personality, he's just. I don't want to be mean, but like. No, no, we talked about it before. Yeah. He, he's not that dog in him. He's a baby. He doesn't have the dog in him. He's, yeah. he's a crybaby. I want Mitchell Robinson. That is my like number one person that I want the Pistons to sign because Mitchell Robinson is a dog. He'll be. He's a great lob threat. He's got freakish long arms. He protects the rim. He runs the floor. He could fill. He'd, he'd be our starting center immediately. He'd be a great like him and Cade. Their personalities are real similar. I think they'd get along really well. I watched him in New York a lot, and he can average three blocks on a season. Like this, oh, this, yeah, this guy is a monster in the paint. And easily, him getting him. And having Marvin Bagley in those pick and roll situations, just just as a lob threat, you know, he's not like an offensive player in any sense of the term, but having him out there to just be another guy that can rim run, another guy that can crash the boards, he'd immediately be the best rebounder on our team. He'd immediate be immediately be the best defensive player on our team, and I think it would be a great fit to fill a couple holes that we need to. What um, what do you think he like commands in this market though? Not much. I mean, I don't. I don't think he's going to command too much. I don't think he's going to be like asking for twenty million a year. You know, he, yeah. he hasn't shown that much yet. He has. He doesn't have those accolades in him, and he's had a little couple injuries in the past couple of years. So, I could see us getting him for like you know ten million a year, something like that. Maybe a four year, forty five million dollar contract or something like that. I'll be real cool with that. Yeah, I'm looking up right now. Kelly Olynyk's contract was like twelve million a year. Yeah, I could see oh, that. God. I'd be cool with that. Yeah. He'd be starting for us at least. For sure. And like he's a definitely a piece like we need. Like we don't have a true center, a true five on the team. Kelly, no. Kelly can get out for all I'm a, I'm a I like Kelly. Yeah, I don't I don't hate Kelly, but like he's just not he's a true trash. five. He's trash. Come on. He's trash. Be nice. He's, he's, <laughs> no. He's, he's not I don't trash. Have to be nice. Oh, hold on. He's I, trash. I don't think he's trash. He's been asked to do more than like he can. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause we suck. So he was like, he was like he, he had to like play a bigger part. He's not built for that. You know what I'm saying? All I know is... Well, you're right. He's not good enough to be <laughs> a fucking starter. Fighter. No, definitely not. He's no. he's a good guy coming off the bench. He's good. If you bring it... Like, he's good for a solid eight minutes of the game. That's <laughs> all I want out of him. No, I don't even want that. Like, I don't, like if that's what I have to give to him, I'll give him eight minutes, but I don't want any of that. Hey, I'm going to him way too much, right? No, I'm joking. No, does can, Adam not like him either? I'm sure he does. I don't know. You can mm. bring in Kelly. I like bringing Kelly and... Sorry, I'm playing with my sunburn. Yeah, that glove tan line, man. Tracing my arm. Yeah, it's pretty wild. That's funny. It's funny. But uh, you bring in uh, bring in Kelly and Beef Stew off the bench. I think that would be good. Uh, I like that. I like Kelly. I'm not a hater on Kelly. I think he, he cannot can, score. He can shoot. Yeah. No, he cannot. Yeah, he can. He's a shooter. He's, he he's, sucks on defense. He sucks. He does, on suck, does on suck on defense, on defense for sure. That's the thing, though. I was like, like I said, I think he just asked to do more, and he just wasn't built for it. You know. I'm almost like, positive I went to one of their games and he did not make a single shot. I could see that. What? All right, did you go when he first came back from injury? No, I went to two or three games. I went to their game against the Cavs the first time, not the first time, but in like in January. Uh huh. And then I went in February too. Yeah. And both games, I think he had a total of the both the two games that I was there, a total of like four points. I mean, I don't know the timeline of that shit. I like Kelly. He's all I know is as much as he gets, yeah, as much slack he's catching. All I know is you are way too big to suck that bad at defense. He, he is yeah, he is a liability boy. on defense for sure. You know, but that's you pair him with Beef Stew, have them come off the bench. One's offensive, one's defensive. 
Those will be that'll be your four and five off the bench. I like that. I like I like Mitchell a lot though. I want to see him starting for the Pistons next year. What do you make of the Brunson talk? Are you sick of it? I'm a little sick of it. I'm a little sick of it. You get a little bit overhyped. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't give him twenty five million a year. Not a chance. He's yeah. a good player, but I think you know. I don't know. I don't think he can be a great starter in the league. I don't think he's going to be a guy that's going to be an all star player. I don't think he's going to be anything like that. I think he's perfect in the role he's in right now. Yes. To where he doesn't have all of that pressure on him because he has so many weapons around him. You know, obviously when Luca was out, he had to be that man and he stepped up for a couple games. We know he dropped 40 in the playoffs, which is impressive. Sheesh. Not a lot of people do that. But can you do that consistently over the length of your contract? And I don't see that from him. I don't see him being a consistent 25 point a game night, which is what you'd be paying him to be. And. If we could get him for cheap, yeah, I'm all for it because we need a point guard, a backup point guard, or somebody, you know, or mm. a two guard. But no, I don't. I don't want to pay him. I don't want to give him a bag. Yeah, I mean, and I'm a little bit biased too. Like, I don't really. I'm not like with the guards as much. Like he's six one. I hate even like discrediting these guys. Like six that one on a good day. Yeah, and I, I hate <laughs> again. Like I hate discrediting these dudes. Six I'm one in heels. Five seven on a good day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But like. I just don't think that's what leads you to championships ultimately. If you look at like the past champions, it's just not, it's not the fucking recipe. So I'm not really trying to give him a bag. And again, I just for all the reasons I just said, the guard. Oh, you you got how you feel about Jalen Brunson at all? You got you got take on him? No, yeah, it's straight. I still like you, Jalen. I'm not trying to disrespect you. You've been up here like you're more than welcome to sit in on Maddie's chair. Uh, oh. Whoa, whoa! In Maddie's chair? Yeah. Uh, in this what chair? This big black chair. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, ultimately, though, I just wanted to bitch about these advanced uh, statistics and metrics fucking taking over the game in terms of, like, I guess, gauging these players based off fucking high, literally hypothetical stats. Like, yeah. wins above replacement, it's a hypothetical fucking thing. Win shares, hypothetical fucking thing. What is VORP? Value of over replacement players. Oh, okay. So, I'm saying that's hypothetical. Like, yeah. like who's to know? Who's to say well, if hey, I... Hey, I lead the league in VORP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. I led rookies in scoring and assists. Like, yeah. W- 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 what's more important? Yeah. No, literally, yeah. Being the number one option on my fucking team, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's bullshit. It is what it is, though. Again, like, I think Scotty would be good down the line. He does guard all five positions. I mean, obviously, fucking Mobley's going to do his thing. He's on a great team, too. But Kate, ultimately, I think is a better player. I think he did have the better season, but it is what it is. We got to move on. However, I do want to keep talking about Detroit Pistons because there's a. Our guy Ben Simmons isn't so much a rumor, just more like a fucking hypothetical. That's going about bitching from hypotheticals to an actual hypothetical more topic. I don't know if you saw this yet, Maddie. He was in the group chat actually, but uh, Zion Williamson, Bill Simmons, like, is trying to like stir up some ruckus, bringing him to Detroit, and the trade would be <laughs> this this year's first round pick, Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bay, and a future first round swap in exchange for Zion Williamson. I don't like Fuck it. Fuck no, baby. Yeah. I don't like it. Hell I, no. Sadiq Bey and Killian are two players that I can't wait to see develop. And I don't even want to give that up. Like, I, uh, they're so good right now. And they're, like, from what I can see, their ceiling is so high if they keep improving like they did this season. Yeah. That I, there's no way. I like them too much. I'm with you. I, I actually, like, personally, like, I've been on the Killian train. I pause, but kind of hard. Like, I've been riding. Oh, okay, I'm just going to stop saying something. I've been rooting for Killian. I, I, Wait I think a minute. This kid, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> honestly, though, I think this kid shows promise. Like, the fact that he's, what, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, he's playing the guard position. We mm-hmm. saw how intense and consistent he could be on the defensive side of the ball. And he hasn't really even got to develop the offensive side. Like, he's really kind of new to America. I think you heard Casey say it, you know, in the offseason and in the, in the – whatever you call it, in the season meetings, he was talking about how, like, he's never, like, developed that dog in him where you have to, like, play to, like, fucking, like, stay on the court. You know what I'm saying? You're playing ball, and the right. fucking walk up, he's like, yo, you want to keep playing all day? Like, you and your team got to win. If you guys want to keep running it. Where he's, like, from France, where it's like, uh-huh. he's, yeah, uh-huh. he's always just been that guy, so he never, like, got off the court. But, like, right. You know, it's a lot more competitive here in America, and, like, we saw it towards the end of the year, you know, and he even said himself, he's like, yo, I just stopped thinking and started, like, balling, like, yeah, that's what you want out of a guy with his abilities. Mm-hmm. His ability wise, like Killian, I, he's cute as hell too. Bro. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we're riding hard for Killian. 
No, but oh, I, I don't, don't want to know about that. Yeah. And, and honestly, guy, like, worst case scenario, like, even if he is what he was at the end of the season, that's a really fucking, like, valuable piece of championship to squad, in my opinion. Like, I, I, am I crazy for saying this? Actually, you you were beefing with Darius over this. Yeah. Garden one through five. Yeah. He can't. I, I think he could. No, he can't. I think he could. All right. Go ahead, say speak your piece. He cannot guard I'm with a you, four Darius. or five in the paint. I'm it's with you, not Darius. happening. He's getting back down and bodied. Not a chance. Switching off of a guy at the top of the perimeter is not guarding a four well, or five. At the perimeter, five. okay, you're right. In That's the not guarding a four or five. Yeah. Guarding a four or five is being on them where they are. Like, when you say somebody can guard a four or five, you're talking about, like, Miami LeBron when he's 270 pounds, and he can guard a point guard, and he can be in the paint guarding a center. Killian Hayes cannot do that. Right, off the switch in the perimeter, he could do it. I'm, I'm with you. In the paint, he probably definitely for sure gets bodied. But and he can't even do that. That he can, you know, like attempt to make that. a steal. He he's can dog stay with him, and he he's got fast hands. But he's not, when they get downhill, on there's nothing he can do. Against, you're saying he can guard a, a Joel Embiid or something? Not a chance. Well, hold on though. No one can really guard Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, Carl Anthony like Towns, those types any of names. Of those guys. Guys. I don't even like. Those I don't think it's names, that's every player. That's every team in the NBA has a player that's that big. But not as good as Joel Embiid. Okay? Not as good no, as Joel but Embiid, still. but like that big guy though. Like I could see Killian stripping him up, ripping him up before they fucking get there in the paint. Like like. Fucking where they got the back, the back. Where they're home. supposed yeah, to be? Story. Guard, yes, <laughs> guarding, yeah, yeah. guarding five is not picking them up off of. Is, is there switching a guy his them. size that you would say he could though? No, there are not a lot of people that can guard one through five. Tony and Allen. if they are, He's it's just, normally a yeah, like a small stars. forward or a yeah, power yeah, 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 forward yeah. that can guard small guys. I'm with you. You'll never get a point guard that can guard a center. Not a chance. Regardless, I, I do still think he could be a great defensive piece. Yes. Oh, for sure. Lower went on champion sure. squad, but I don't fucking remember how we started talking about that. I just I'm hyped for Killian. I think Killian. What our about boy, the Zion trade. Yeah. Yeah, the Zion trade. Yeah, I just I Zion would be. It is crazy because Zion is so fucking good when healthy. He is when healthy. Not healthy. Yeah. However, do we really think that he's a a fit in Detroit? I just don't. I don't think Zion's a big like flashy guy where he would be like fucking like oh my brand my brand like. He's in New Orleans. He never really made a big deal about it. I think. Well, duh, because I think he's this, in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, New Orleans is pretty fucking lit. I'm not gonna lie. It's honestly one of my favorite cities. Shout out. But I just think. Shout out. I think for him at this point in his career, I could be totally wrong. This is like this fucking wind share, fucking warp take, maybe hypothetical bullshit. But like, I think he just wants to get on the court and, and prove like the doubters wrong. Although there aren't that many doubters at this point in time because he showed what he did last year. But like with the injuries, they're they're creeping up. I wouldn't trade Sadiq if if it was. A first rounder, Killian and Jeremy Grant for Zion. I'll be like, I'll think about it more. Yeah. Even then, yeah. I don't really like trading for Zion because we don't know if he's going to be healthy. We don't know the status of his injury. And with a guy that's three hundred pounds with that type of athleticism, the big boy, he's going to get hurt again. Like yeah. you're not supposed humans are not supposed to be that big and that fast and that strong. It's it's like well, yeah, almost physically impossible. Yeah. Yes. Walking around and jumping 45 inches in the air when you're 300 plus pounds. That's insane. Like, that I mean, puts stress on your joints. The mother effer broke out of his freaking basketball yes. shoes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a video of him in, uh, like, denting the court. Yeah, denting the court. Literally, he did a dunk. He came down. He dented the court. Oh it's like, he is that. a freak of nature. Like, yeah. he's so powerful that his, his joints are going to give out. What do you think his role on a team is, in a championship team? An all-star. He's, he's, he had to be like that guy? Yeah. He has to be that guy. Yeah. Which I feel like Cade would definitely like be able to utilize him. Oh, dude. Like 100%. Lob City all For fucking sure. day. sure, yeah. But winning basketball, I don't know. I We just got to see more of him, I guess. His I style, know. yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't even... His style is so different than the way the Pistons play. He was running... When he was healthy at the end of the year, he was running, like, point Zion. Like, he was bringing the ball up the court, going coast to it coast, was, that dunking was it. on people. It was, it was disgusting. The Zion show. And, yeah, it's... So it's saying, like, that healthy with Cade, though? Like, you can't, like... But is he going to be a ball hog? I don't think so. Is he going to make it the Zion show? No, because, like, he's used to being, like... The ball saying, hog and doing everything himself. Not the ball hog, but he'll fucking... He'll be a... 
Lob City. He's he's yeah. used to playing with talent because obviously yeah. he did it at Duke. Duke. He played yeah. with R.J. Barrett, Cam Radish. They had a squad. He did it. He played with John Morant in AAU. They were you know teammates in AAU, so he knows how to play with other stars. He knows what sure. to do, and I think. But Ja also wasn't great. Yeah, I mean, he was real good. He, I mean, he was. He was, good. He, wasn't he was just John a little. Morant, he he was, was a little now. undersized. Yeah. He just. He's kind of like. He's just cerebral. So Ja will like fucking yeah. like say, "Okay, I'm just gonna feed you." Right now, though, I think he should stay in New Orleans because if he gets on the court with Brandon Ingram and with all those rookies they got and CJ McCollum, they'll have a squad. By the way, I wasn't shitting on Herb Jones, more so shitting on Kevin Pelton. Yeah. Watching Herb in these playoffs. Yeah. The boy, the boy. I mean, yeah, he's playing well. Yeah. But he's not rookie of the year. No, definitely not rookie of the year. Yeah. Yeah, that's some fucking doo doo ass take. So, no to Zion. Do you feel crazy saying no to Zion? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> a little bit, right? I you do, feel for a sure. Crazy. I mean, Sadiq. Well, because you have to think about it. It's like you, you can't just say yes to every good player there is. And be like, oh, yeah, trade for them, trade for them, yeah. trade for them. Then you're never going to build anything. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think that we need to trade too many players that have potential in order to get somebody that we know is good, but we don't know that can play with our team. I would want Zion on my – if you could guarantee me – that Zion will play okay. every Plus, game and be healthy and be healthy for the majority the next, of his yeah. contract. I will do that trade. Yeah, because he is, uh, like I said, he as a rookie, he was averaging yeah. like twenty six points. Good player, on, like sixty percent shooting. Game. Like he is unstoppable when he's in the game. But uh, he's like Greg Oden. Like I don't think he's gonna play that much. Honestly, I can see him falling apart physically, like Greg Oden did. It is fucking crazy. I'm looking at his numbers right now. 33% from three. Yes. Fucking 60% overall. Yeah. Averaging 25 points. 25 points on 60%. That is shooting. fucking crazy. But uh, it's it's kind of like, I mean, I almost like the upside of Zion more than what Anthony Davis is or did because, like, that's just fucking insane. The, the three-point shooting as well. But, like, yeah, I guess the most important ability is availability. You look at great talents like Ben Simmons, fucking Anthony Davis, and the, there's your case in point right there. Yeah, as amazing Davis. as they can be. They're not having been available, and it's affected them teams their teams negatively. So I, I ultimately, I guess I have to agree with you guys. I just it just feels fucking crazy saying that. Anthony right. Davis gets traded back to the Pelicans for Zion Williamson. That'd be fucking wild. <laughs> That'd be they should so do funny. that. I mean, shit. I mean, I don't know, man. Just trading body bags. A thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dead you want, man walking. Do you want to talk about the playoffs? You think of that drag on too far? That drag on too far. Yeah. All right, let's get some hockey then. We got a, we got a, a little hockey talk. A little hockey. Okay. How familiar are you with the Swedish Elite League? Uh, honestly, I'm not as familiar as no I should is. be. Other than me, I am yeah, the fucking. Easy's the. I am the Red Wing Swedish well, scout. I've Easy's heard. The, yeah, the Swedish scout. Guten Tag, Swedish Dergen. Guten Tag. That's Guten German. Ingle yeah, Dinger Dergen. Yeah, Dergen Spergen. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have boys in Sweden real quick. He, he went there. I, I think we were studying abroad. And he ended up knocking some girl up. No, I just. Nice. Some random mixed kid. Fucking. That's, you know, that's... Yeah. That's right up, up your alley of friendship, Shout out, eh? Mario. <laughs> Shout out, Mario. Shout out. Yeah, Shout out. Mario. <laughs> Clap it up for Mario. Oh, real quick, though. Strap Sign- up, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not what it is. Yeah, use a rubber. I'm not strap getting... Strap up? Yeah, strap your shit up. I'm not yeah, using wait, what do you call it? You never heard that way? Strap up sounds she's like a too, strap on. She's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrap up. Wrap up, strap up, cap up. Wrap up. it before you tap it. Strap up. <laughs> Always strap. Right. It's, it's not worth getting. It's not, eh? it's not worth getting a random. Getting uh, <laughs> not worth getting a random Swedish girl pregnant. That's for sure. Or maybe it was. What if it changed his life? Wait, Lucas well, she's Raymond's a sweet, Swedish, yeah. Yeah. So unless it's Lucas Raymond's mom, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zayman Zy- Ervinson. I'll tell you what though, if Zyman. I'm if I'm like having sex with like a doctor or like somebody rich, Are you a doctor, somebody rich. <laughs> oh, he I'm rich, poking, rich. I'm poking holes in that bitch. Like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're having a kid. Grandma Gersh. You're gonna be my Grandma Gersh. <laughs> my goal in life is to be a stay-at-home dad. I think you're on your way. I love that for you. I hope. Like, <laughs> just raise good kids. Raise a dog, you know. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> a couple kids, a dog, have a pool or something. Just picture a dog like walking across the stage. Wait, pick it back. My, <laughs> my neighbor Adam, Adam, his dad, like almost 
had the perfect life in my eyes. Where's the almost come in? Where's like the he had a daughter. I want three sons, and he had two I sons and a daughter. I wanted five boys. I want three boys. Yeah, honestly, being a girl dad probably fucking sucks. Yeah, I was watching. I think it was uh, trying to overcome. My daughter boys. ends up. If I had a daughter and she ended up anything like me, we'd all be screwed. <laughs> yeah, that's like I, I saw like uh, I think it was this was like a while ago, but Jake Paul's story and like he had like. This girl's like on his fucking like I don't know, dude. If that was my daughter, I'd just be like fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I don't know how Stafford's gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> oh, dude. Did you imagine like oh, this is not a conversation? For and Maddie twin to be girls, in the room. twin girls. You're gonna have two girls at one time. Hopping on the hub, and just be like seeing your daughter. Oh, <laughs> God, bro. That'd just be. Oh, I don't oh know black duck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm dead. Your daughter's the girl sitting on the couch with the five black dudes behind her? Yeah, this is your fucking daughter and Zion Williams. <laughs> Stop it! The like, guy's denting the basketball court and banging <laughs> your fucking I'm about to go hard in the paint. Oh my girl. Uh, I mean, if I have a daughter, she can do what she wants. So I don't really care. <laughs> Clip it. I'm not Clip gonna, it. You know, I'm not gonna do nothing. We're gonna send that to your daughter. If she wants to do it, she can do it. As long as it's nothing stupid or like drugs. She's gonna have sex, oh well. You know. Everybody has sex. But she can't do drugs. She can't do drugs. She can do certain drugs, but I was gonna say, like, come on, dude. <laughs> nothing nothing like bad. Not bad drugs. Not illegal drugs? No, like bad drugs, like heroin, meth, and crack. Those are like yeah, the yeah. three bad drugs. Started I mean, from the trap, now I rap. Yeah. Started uh, from the trap, now I rap. All right, so Simon Edmondson. <laughs> <laughs> so how about this guy? Talking about our daughter. Simon Edmondson, yeah? Yeah, okay, so he's, yes. the, yes. he's a top 20 uh, Sweden player. Uh, he led the league in the plus minus. Bullshit, stem I'm kidding. <laughs> but he led, he no, led the hockey, league. In, hockey plus minus is a lot, yeah. Well, plus, I, I agree with plus minus. Okay. It's a fucking, like, okay. warp and war and shit. I'm like, warp, fuck war. you with yeah. that shit. That shit's hypothetical as fuck. But anyway, block shots, he led the league in 54, and he was second in hits. And he actually had another stat that I just didn't put down on the sheet. But, like, dog, most siders finally have a fucking pairing. I was going to say, him Boy. with most siders is going to be dope. Yeah, I'm fucking sick. You got you listen to D-Mac talk about it today, uh, Spence. Like, what, what what was his take on it? Yeah, no, that he's going to be on the Red Wings next year. And that's, if he joined the Red Wings right now, he would be second our second best, best yeah. defenseman that we have. And I don't know if they're going to pair them together. That would be awesome. We would have, you know, one of the best defensive pairs in hockey in a couple years if they did. Or they split them up, and they split up that greatness. You know, they have Mo Sider with a bump, and then they have Evanson with a bump. You know, so you got at least one stud back there yeah. most of the time on the ice. But I'm just excited. You know, we got all these prospects. Bernin was – or Bernier, Bernin, Bernin, whatever. Bernier. Yeah, Bernier. he – you know, he led the league in – Swedish scout, no big deal. In scoring and – you know, we've got a couple other Swedes out there. Yeah, we've got five of the top. Albert Johansson. Ten. Yeah. Another defenseman. Elmer Solderbloom, mm-hmm. fucking 6'8", Solder- 245. Yeah, Maddie, you know, fuck, yeah, this guy's six fucking eight playing the forward position. Yeah, forward. He's got saucy mitts. Terrifying. Mitts. mitts. And, Terrifying. Yeah, I'm just excited. Uh, Evanson, like people in the chat were like, oh, he, you know, he'll probably be in Grand Rapids most of the year. But d Max was like, no, he's going to be on the Red Wings next year. Yeah, because I, when you move him up to the entry level like, contract, you start his fucking clock. Yeah. Well, he's 19, so I guess it doesn't start until he's 20. Yeah, no, like you that. can, like, they can play in the AHL still, but it's, he signed a three year entry level contract. Yeah. He's going to play. Burn years in the AHL with him. Like, yeah, you know? he, he's going to play for the Red Wings next year. If you guys can, because I am the, the hockey novice, although I am the, the official Swedish scout for the Detroit Red Wings, no big deal. But the AHL. Physical shit, eye roll. Like, I guess this is tough because this is like a t- this had to be like a hockey nerd question, but AHL versus SHL, like, is there even that big of a difference? No, they're they've closed the gap really. The Swedish the Swedish Elite League SEL, yeah, they really closed the gap on it. AHL used to be, that's what it was. That's you're you're in the AHL. That's the second best yeah. league in the world, other than like. And that's other just because they're bringing them home, so they can keep an eye. Yeah, on you're them. bringing them in. And you're you're getting them with the coaches. You're getting them with the other players that are going to be making the team in a couple years. But now with the Swedish Elite League, these guys are just as good. They're just as talented. They're playing against just as good competition. And it's but it's a little different because you're playing, you know, European rules, bigger, bigger rank, faster, 
and it's tough, but the way we've seen these prospects come out of the Swedish league, it's not that much of a difference anymore. Real quick, I ask you guys this because he's 19. And obviously Moe's young and, and, and uh, Raymond's young, but like, is that common for like 19 year olds to break into the NHL? Like, is it usually like, like two years in this fucking like, you know, I guess lesser leagues until they break in or like? Hockey's probably the sport where most of the young players are brought up earlier. Okay. Like, they start so early, and the earlier that they can make it into, you know, the mm-hmm. AHL, the OHL, wherever they're going, the better. Because yeah. that's, like, they're more successful when it comes to that. Like, hockey starts serious at such a young age. And I feel like that's not the same with other sports. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Like yeah, well, other than basketball. Ba- yeah. 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 Basketball is kind of the same way. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, if you're a hockey parent, you're probably like for sure like going fucking hard because you're paying so much guys yeah. money. You're like, listen, Junior. Yeah. Well, and he's like, <laughs> well, I missed his lease this month right? so you can do this shit. Well, it's so much more common for, for hockey players to leave home as teenagers because they go and they live with billet parents and they go and play for these teams that are away from home. Yeah. So like they're just like, they're a different breed. Honestly. Yeah, and especially now with how the NHL has changed with the play style and it's not as physical as it used to be. That's you're uh, seeing so much more of these younger guys come up and make an immediate impact. Like imagine bringing up a 19 or an 18-year-old and he has to go against fucking Darren McCarty. Darren McCarty. I was just going like, to say that. This guy's about to like, fucking <laughs> yeah, destroy him. Like, <laughs> you fucking imagine. Yeah, you, back then, you had to learn how to play against grown men before yeah. you were getting in the NHL. But now it's it's about speed. It's about you mm-hmm. know skill more than it is toughness You're looking at more of like a Datsuk type player yeah. nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's more of the, the technical, smarter players yeah. that are quick and can like dangle the shit out like of the David. puck. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. That's where it's coming from. Kyle McDavid's a big dude, too, though. He's he's a fucking unicorn. So that's what else I going to ask, too, because I know we got Rapsy Sen, who's, like, a big fucking dude. Yeah. Um, Because, obviously, fucking Stevie Y is coming over from the Lightning. Cause they're, again, guys, I'm, like, new. Like, they're a pretty big fucking team. I know defensively, but are their forwards large, too? Yeah, yeah, they got big guys. I mean, they've got big guys. They've got small guys. They had a whole team. It, it, it got broken up a little bit since they left and since they won those cups, but it's, you know... You need a little bit of everything, and that's what he's building. You you can't strictly just be like, all right, we're running only skill players. We're running only tough guys. You know, you need you need a little bit of everything, and you need those guys that can do both. You need the Victor Hedmans that are going to score, you know, thirty goals, and they're also going to fucking punch you in the mouth. And yeah. so it's important, and that's what Stevie Y is building. He's building this as a, a a championship contender from the ground up. I see like a lot too of when. The players that Stevie Y is bringing to the team, I see him building an older Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, Kings. for sure. Like, you see that older ask, style yeah. play come back in, like, the the gritty, like, yeah. enforcer type. Because, I mean, you see, like, Dylan Larkin. Somebody comes at Dylan Larkin, and, like, Bertuzzi's all over it. He's like, I, I got Bertuzzi. this. Don't touch my cap. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And that's old school hockey. That's like, you don't mess with my people, you don't, whatever. And I think that kind of went away for a little bit. But you can see, like, the way he's building this team, it it feels like an older Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, I mean, that's how he won. Exactly. That's why I was asking about the size thing, because that's the one trend I've noticed in all these guys he's bringing in outside of, obviously, Raymond. But, like, they're bigger fucking dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, Soderboom's six fucking eight. Yeah. He drafted Koso, six six, and the goalie. Like, goalies is... It's that's goalies. been the wave lately, like tall goalies, like Vasilevsky, like all these guys. These are tall, big goalies. It's just the the hockey players now have never been more athletic. Like hockey players have never been more athletic than they are now. Now you're seeing these guys that are six eight, that are six five, mm-hmm. six four, that are athletic, can move, can do all this stuff, and you don't just have these goons. Like the goon is not a position in the no. NHL anymore. You don't have the guy that's out there strictly Only to go for, out there yeah. and fuck somebody up. You know, it's, that's McCarty. like my favorite. Yeah, movie you need, you need a little life. bit. Well, D Mac, dude, D Mac still had he had a nasty wrist shot. He had a nasty slap shot. Like he did his thing. He wasn't a goal scorer, but he could score some goals. Yeah. He could score some goals. Who, who's my man in the Capitals? He's like my favorite. I I wanted to hate him after the fucking shit he did against uh, New York last year. Uh, is it Matt something? You know what I'm talking about. He plays for he plays for the Capitals. He's fucking. I'm not. I was gonna say he's good looking. I don't know how the fuck else to describe this. <laughs> he's he looks like a clean cut guy, but he's an, he's an absolute like asshole. Mm. He started that bullshit last year with the Islanders. Is it Tom Wilson? Yes, Tom Wilson. Dude, dude. I love Tom Wilson. I like Tom Wilson too. I want to You know to he him. played for the Plymouth Whalers. 
I did not. I did know that actually. Sean In the Luigi OHL. Told me. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I'm pretty pumped. And obviously, we got Verona now, too. Like, fucking, like, this kid's fucking tearing up. I think sniper. he's like four or five yeah. games and two goals. Yeah. Like, I'm so excited for next year. It's not even funny. Mm-hmm. And Nadalkovic is is the the first goalie to have four shutouts in, a, in their rookie season since 1965. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got to think, too, like, he has a shit fucking defense playing in front of him. He had a shutout on 46 shots. Yeah. Yeah. Like forty six shots, and he Wild. didn't want to see Yeah, it was like last month or a couple yeah. weeks ago. I remember that. Yeah, like last night or yeah, last night it was only seventeen shots. So it's like I mean, it's still impressive when yeah. you get a shutout, but like forty six shots, not forty six shots is you're a fucking man. Like yeah, big yeah. dick Ned. All right, so I, <laughs> one more one more question, and I'm sorry, I probably should have had Scott or D Mac. I don't know if there's like too much for you guys, but like I heard Scott oh, and D Mac speaking too much about. For you. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I just don't know because you're not a Swedish scout like myself, so I don't know. <laughs> but no, I heard D Mac and Scott when we had him on the show a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about like uh, Larkin, our captain right now, is like a second line center. Well, like, is that like production wise? That's what you would want. You would want if he's you know a 30 sc- goal scorer, a point of game guy. That is what you would want out of your second line center. So I think that's what they're saying. But like, why would he be your first line though if he's like? He's not good enough to be a first line. No, he is. I mean, you want, but you want your first line center to be a 50 goal scorer. You know, you want that dude to be your dog. You want him to win every face off. You want him to score all the goals. You want him to be a hundred point scorer on the year. And Larkin hasn't shown that. He showed this year that he, he can be a point of game guy, which is a good step. But to be a true, like, first line center, like, number one guy, you want that 50 goal scorer. And that's just not what Larkin is. There's no correlation in that. And being captain, though, if no, that's what you're no. asking. Okay, so he'll still be captain, but you understand. Yeah, captain, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. He's still an amazing leader. He's yeah. been, honestly, he's exceeded my expectations yeah. on being the captain. For sure. Um, and I think he, he has the respect of the locker room, which is the biggest part. Yeah. And I'm looking up the stats right now, but I know, like, obviously he's having the surgery. He had the surgery at the end of the season early this year. Mm-hmm. But you look at the his numbers before, and I had him up at one point. Obviously, that was like a week ago when I was on BDE, but like, dog, it's like night and day. You could tell like when he got hurt, it was like this production went way down. Yeah. It was almost a point of game. Guy heading into the All-Star break. After All-Star break, that's when you started seeing this shit dip. But I don't know, man, I'm just getting excited because like you got Verona, uh, that I like fucking, obviously we have Evanson on the way, Cider, Raymond. I don't know, man. I just, I don't know hockey, but I'm getting pumped for it. Yeah. yeah. So. No, they got good things coming. They're for exciting sure. for sure. I'm going to come up. A thousand percent. Give them a couple of years. They'll be, they'll be contenders. You know, the thing is saying, I think they could be contenders next year. Uh, contenders, contenders, or just like in the playoffs? It depends. Yeah. It depends. For I sure. guess hockey is that kind of sport where you get like puck luck and like. Well, and not there. even that, but like if we can, I mean, again, Nidalkovic is phenomenal. If yeah. we can get any type of defense, like besides him, and we can actually get an offense and stay on offense for longer than freaking five seconds. Like, we got to quit these 11 score games, you know? Like, are you kidding me? That shit's crazy. Like, that can't happen. That shit's actually wild as fuck. Because I, when I did watch hockey, I was like, was like when I was way younger, I remember the scores would be like fucking like 3-2. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it's just like... 11-1. to one. Yeah. I'm like, what? What is going on? Or like, fucking like six, seven games. Like, what, like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Which is like all, like, it happens. It yeah. does. But you took the physicality out of the game a little bit too, so it's probably another reason why. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think uh, they could do it. It just depends. It depends. We'll see. Some other everything st- depends. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like the diapers. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that adult diapers? I don't know, but we'll, we'll sponsor them. You guys, you know, you know what I'm saying? It depends where you at. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I'll shit myself. I in, did not in a understand. Pair of what literally, I was like that yeah. went right over my head for so long. You know what? That's what I'm doing after the show. I'm firing off the tweet from the heavyweights account of Spencer shitting himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna at the pens like, depends. yo, hook us up. What's yeah. a brand of depends? The diapers are adult. Diapers. I know, but like, what is it though? Like not, not huggers. Oh. Wait, not huggers. Depends. No, it's like if, it's for like old people depends. to shit themselves. Yeah, I know what they are, but like I'm saying, what is a, a brand of them? Um, depends. I think depends, depends. Yeah, that's is the, the brand. brand. Depends is oh, the brand. It is. You're right. It's okay. Whatever. You, you know, we were here a minute. Isn't there more than just that, though? Tampons or something, maybe? I don't fucking know. Tampons? Well, there's diapers. It's like the same family. Depends. Tampons, diapers. Wow, oh, these depends are nice. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Miggy's 3000, guys. I just went yesterday. There was a 24-hour sale on the Tops card. 
I bought five of them. Was that a bad investment? I need to know right now. What'd you say? I don't have a lot of money, so I don't know if it was a good decision <laughs> or not. I went online, so there was like a 24 no, hour sale. I don't sale. have a lot of money. Uh, Tops was having a 24 hour sale oh, on the Miggy 3000, like new cards they were coming out with. I bought five of them. Miggy hit 3,000 hits. Like, how big is this? Is it like, was that a bad investment? I might. No, like, I know? mean, Miguel Cabrera is arguably the greatest hitter of all time, so it's never bad to own his shit. Five of them. If you see him, <laughs> if you see him maybe you can get him signed. Oh, that's the plan. Go to hit, hit up Tammy. If she I'm ever start has. practicing. Yeah, my Vene- Tammy's yeah. probably got you. I'm start practicing my Venezuelans. I'd be like, yeah, what the, yeah. He, he speaks English. Sing, sign this for me. Yeah. <laughs> All you have to say is, bruh. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Miguel. Bruh. Hello, Mr. Cabrera. <laughs> sign this. Yeah. Sign yeah. here. I saw if a, you hand him a Sharpie in the card, he'll know what to do. I got Cabrera's you don't even have to signature. Speak words. <laughs> <laughs> I got Cabrera's signature. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got one too, actually. I met him and Maglio at a Best Buy. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Which one? This was when I was real young. Maglio. The one on, uh, I loved Mags. Oh, you're in Birmingham? Yeah. No, no, no. It's so, like Mads 14 Knights? and John R. Yeah. Oh, I'm camping out of that boy. That was like 20 years ago. Not, That's all right. He probably really. shops there still. But no, it probably. No, it was, it was when I was like. I got to think. It's probably like. It was not 20 years ago. No, it was probably like 2009. Yeah. I mean, what did you have him sign, by the way? A hat. The hat I was wearing. You were wearing a Detroit hat? Yeah, it was a Tiger's hat. Fucking clutch. My dad, like, my dad, my I was there with my dad and my older brother, and they saw him, and, you know, I was, like, a little kid at the time, and they're like, you go up to him. <laughs> and they, they'll talk to you before they talk to us. I was yeah. like, all right. I was like, oh hi, Cabrera. I was like, I love you. I have a Danny DeKaiser's autograph. That's, <laughs> that's about it. That boy in the Burn that way. I was going to say, uh, and I wore the whole lot. <laughs> his stock went down this year. You know why? I had too. such high expectations for him, too. Like, I thought he was going to be phenomenal for years to come, and it was, like, a good year. <laughs> He's still a young guy, though, isn't he? He is still uh, Look it up. Danny DeKaiser? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know he just had a baby. I know that happened this year. Yeah. And his girl was probably fucking like, damn, dude, I had this baby with you because I thought you were going to be sweet. And now look at you. No, I'm just kidding. It's D-E. I'm definitely not spelling it right, but no, it's Google's going to get me right. I, I meant to put, oh my God, he looks old as fuck. It's D-E. What do you mean? Danny DeKaiser. It's D-E. Oh. Well, I was just hoping for Google to just fucking hook it up, but they pull up Danny. No, because you didn't spell it anything near what it was supposed to be. All right, to be honest, oh, no, he's not. He's 32. Yeah, he's done, though. Yeah, you try. You should try to sell that now. All right. I'm not selling it. So good investment, then? Yeah. All right. I didn't pay for it. Solid investment, because, like, here, I'm trying to find this thing. No, I don't have a lot of money. No, okay, so, like, 3,000 hits and 500, 500 home runs. Only six other men in history have been a member of that club. 3,000 hits, 500 homers, and a 300 average. Oh. It's no, just, he doesn't have 600 doubles Just yet. Hank Aaron, Willie no, Mays, and bench. Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, he's 3, 000, one away. 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, 600 he's one doubles. one away from 600 doubles. Yeah, he needs one more. It, Hank Aaron, yeah. Albert Pujols, and Miggy would be the only three in that club. 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, two MVP awards. Miggy would join Willie Mays, Albert Pujols, and A-Rod. Multiple batting titles and home run titles, plus 3,500 um, Hank Aaron and Miggy would be the only players. 3,000 hits, 500 home runs, and a triple crown. Only Miguel Cabrera would be the player. And is the player Dang. that has done that. So, like I said, he's, I mean. Clap I've, it up for Miggy. Miggy. Let's go. Strap up. He's the best player. <laughs> he's the best hitter of all time. I don't give a fuck what you say. You, you, you want to talk about Babe Ruth? I don't give a fuck about Babe Ruth. Baby. Babe Ruth was up there when there was white plumbers throwing 60 mile per hour slot balls. If you put Miguel Cabrera back when Babe Ruth was playing, he'd hit 500 home runs in one year. Like, it's you put Babe Ruth against these guys who are throwing 104 miles an hour, dropping a curveball 12 inches off the plate, yeah. he'd shit his pants. Like, well, it's like, I mean, it's a, that's every conversation that we have right now, right? It's like, you can't, you, you can no longer classify somebody as the greatest player of all like their sport i feel like it has to be segmented in like eras in eras because yeah. it's so hard you. it's so you. hard but gal oh, yeah. is the greatest hitter of all time for sure Better than albert pools Unsegmented. Yes. how, how uh, pool is older than him right yeah a lot older he has 1700 more at bats okay and he only has six more hits wow facts 
So he's the, the so if he's the greatest hitter of all time, he's obviously the greatest tiger of all time too. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you guys. I know obviously our guy fucking Ty Cobb has a ring, but it's like again, Ty Cobb sport. racist. Super play, racist. Didn't play against a black person or a Hispanic person. Was going against white dudes throwing sixty miles an hour. I don't yeah. give a fuck how many batting titles white, he had. White dudes coming yeah. out yeah. coming out of the dugout after ripping darts and eating hot dogs. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah. it's just the difference of athleticism and competition. Yeah, it's just different. It's too now. much to overlook. You can't say Ty Cobb is better than Miguel Cabrera. Yeah. Like it hits different, literally. <laughs> you could say he has better <laughs> stats, he has more accolades, sure, Once but he's, you go not, back, you know, he's not a better player. <laughs> he's not a better hitter. No, oh, yeah, and, 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 and he's racist. Yeah, and he's he was super against black racist. people playing in MLB. Dog, so so I, Terry also laid this I mean this little fun fact or like trivia thing. There's like a theory that Babe Ruth was like biracial. Like people were like uh, Ty Cobb wouldn't share a cabin with him when they went on this like uh, MLB like hunting trip. I don't know if it was MLB back then, but and he was like, "I'm not, I'm not betting with a." Whoa, whoa, yeah, really, yeah, and that's Babe Ruth. You know what I'm saying like, and I guess so. Babe Ruth like Harlem was like where he chilled at, and he had like, tons of like, black was... girlfriends and shit. Like, really? Yeah, he had the, yeah. the he was wide a dog. And, like, yeah. Well, there's like there's a theory though that he was like mixed. It's like what it is. I don't know. Makes sense. He was pretty That's why good. He's the best player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's playing once against the stupid white boys. You know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No. Pr- pretty fucking rough. We got Hunter Dickinson on here. I don't really give a fuck Hunter Dickinson. I mean, all dude, cool. Hunter for Dickinson, them. Hunter Dickinson is Michigan coming program. back to Michigan because he can't play in the NBA. That's what it is. Literally, is what it is. Yes. Good for him. Good for Michigan. Like I mean, good for them. I guess. Yeah. No. It's especially you know, they land like a, if they got. Would he's you be a good college Monty? player? Would you be kind of excited to watch that? No, I wouldn't care. Yeah, I'd be excited. I'm, I'm a Michigan State fan, but like again, like I say this all the time, I root for greatness over everything. They had Amani and like Hunter's returning, like I would be fun to watch. Yeah, snaps. Right I would up. hope the worst of Amani comes out if he went to Michigan and they just yeah, <laughs> the program comes like ultra diva. Yeah, you're gonna have to fucking kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you might stop chucking up shots in half court. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> if you want to stop me, you're gonna have to fucking kill me. That's a fucking great show, by the way. Shout that out to Ozark. Show. Oh. Ozark's sick. All right. Damn, Russ cut the air off. I guess it's. Uh, hey, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say nothing. That's all right. We got one. We got one last stop. We'll get to it because it wouldn't be a heavyweights episode if we didn't bitch about Jared Goff. Yeah, Jared Goff sucks. He's a cuck. Oh, Keyshawn Johnson boy. thinks Jared Goff. Is better than all the other quarterbacks coming out of the draft this year. You know why he said that? Why? Because he's banging Jared Goff's girlfriend. I mean, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I don't even fucking know what this is. He's is ta- that for serious? I, 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 no, no, it's not. Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm sick of hearing this bullshit though. Fucking Jared Goff. Oh, Jared Goff would be great if you put a great team around him. So would any other fucking player in the NFL. Yeah. It doesn't make you a good player if you can only be good when you're surrounded by greatness. That makes you average. That makes you Baker Mayfield. That makes you Jimmy Garoppolo. That makes you Jared Goff. That makes you guys that are not exciting to watch, not good at their position, and will never amount to anything. I said this on BDE today. Jared Goff will never win a Super Bowl in Detroit. Jared Goff will never win a playoff game in Detroit. Jared Goff will never win an NFC North in Detroit. It's not going to happen. He's not good enough. We don't have a good enough team to surround him with the pieces for him to maybe make a run in the playoffs. And I don't want to sit here and wait for it. I don't want to wait for all of these guys to burn up their contracts and we're wasting these good rookie contracts playing with Jared Goff, who is an average at best quarterback that will never amount to a stud, a starter, who is not somebody that you can pass up on drafting somebody who can potentially be good because you have Jared Goff on your team. Sick of it. Done with it. Are you trying to draft a QB that starts next year? No. Um, no, we don't need to start it. We can start Jared Goff for one more year. I said yeah. that too. I'm yeah. fine with it. Jared Goff starting next year. I've accepted that. It is what it is. But after that, get him the fuck out of here. Well, I'm I done with it. I think that's the goal, right? Yes. Yes. It's We're trying to build, we're trying to get the players that we can get because quite honestly, like this year is not a, a super strong QB Draft. No, like this is just they don't have a strong class. So if we can wait till next year and get somebody next year, that's gonna be a. But stud. The, what everybody says is that is that it's that we'll we'll wait till next year. We'll get one of those one of those big guys coming out. It's also 
the same people that say that are, oh, Jared Goff's going to make improvements, and this is going to be an eight-win football team next no, year. No, he's a bridge if quarterback. An, if you're an eight-win football team next year, you're not going to have a chance to get one of those good quarterbacks. And if somebody's in the position to draft one of those good quarterbacks, they're not going to trade them to you. They're not going to trade back for it. Like, uh, we're in the position right now. <laughs> we're in the position right now to get a quarterback. <laughs> if we pass up on it because of Jared Goff, if you pass up on it because it's it's you know it's not happening, you researched all these guys, they're not a good fit. That's fine. Do you fine. think one of the quarterbacks that are in this draft Malik class? Willis. Okay. I want Malik Willis. I want them to draft Malik <laughs> Willis at two. Where you at where you at with that, Maddie? You want to draft him at two? Yes. Okay. Where you at with, with golf? I th- I mean I think he's a bridge quarterback. Yeah. I don't we're not keeping him any longer than one more year. And the second we draft a quarterback, this is my only worry. The second we draft a quarterback at 2, the clock starts for Holmes and for Campbell. Mm-hmm. So if nothing happens in the next 2 to 3 years, they're gone too. And then we have to start over. And that's yeah. what happens though. I mean, it is what it is. I if mean, if they can't get the job done, they can't get the job done. You know, yeah. But but to be fair like well, yes, I can't say this about Sneed. Was Snead there when they drafted Jared Goff? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was the yes. guy. Yeah. I mean, there, there's that situation. That was like his, like, mentee. And so was his mentor. That's like where he's coming from. So, like, say we drafted Willis. Yeah, sure, the clock starts. But that doesn't. that's not to say that, like, they end up in a Ram situation or, or Brown situation where they ultimately trade for the guy. Yeah, you know And we, if we sure. draft Malik Willis, I don't think the clock starts. It's not like we have a clock team ready starts. to win. If we just draft Malik Willis, exactly, and these we guys are going to take him at deals. two. Yeah, yes. well, here, here's what it is, right? The argument is this: this is where it gets. I get lost and I get like I start thinking people are like stupid. Is like they say, don't draft the quarterback this year because you can next year. We could trade everything to get there. So like, one, you're telling me that like, so your argument is, hey, don't draft him now because you need to build a team. Then you're saying that after this draft, we have a fucking team. That's basically what you're telling me. And we're going to insert a rookie quarterback who's never, by the way, it's never happened in the history of the NFL. Rookie quarterbacks never won the Super Bowl, right? It's usually a pretty shit year the first year. That's what you're implying, which isn't going to be the case. Two, if your goal is to build the team, you want to trade picks that you're going to put on, like, those are fucking football that players That you're going to use team. to build the team. Yes, yeah. when, when, especially if you have a GM like Brad Holmes who's, who's hitting on those picks, mm-hmm. and they're being starters. You want to trade a, a plethora of fucking potential starters on your team to get an unproven commodity in the quarterback. Yeah. It happens every single year. We, we Everybody, like, hey, this is the best quarterback. Best quarterback. How many times have we seen it not work out? From Baker Mayfield to fucking, this is, I mean, the whole list. Ryan Leaf, like, throughout the entire hit, like, the, more, than any other, any, more than any other position, quarterback is the most uncertain. So you're telling me you want to trade what can be proven commodities in, in terms of, like, the starter players on your teams on rookie deals for an unproven one in the quarterback that you just don't know what he's ultimately going to be. Sure. Like, if you have a quarterback there, take him. And you can still build that fucking team. I'm it. cool on drafting a quarterback at 32, which took me a long time to get to. But at two, I want an edge rusher. The only, the only. I don't want to. I don't want to pick somebody at two that might be a miss. Well, that's the thing though. Like they're all might. Be. I knew. Yeah. There's sure, not a but like, but like, we're st- we're starting this edge rusher. This person, the guy that we drafted at two, which whatever whoever he is, mm-hmm. is who. In my perspective, if you're drafting somebody at number two, you're expecting them to start this year. Unless it's a quarterback, you know, but but no, here's the thing, though. Nothing's... But at 32, I mean, in how many mock drafts that we've done, I've seen multiple, multiple quarterbacks fall and still be available at number 32. Yeah, sure, but, but they're not of the they're... same caliber of, like, a guy like Malik Willis. Yeah, it, you know the, the difference saying? between Malik Willis. The last one that I did, I had freaking... Uh, What's his face at 32? Desmond Ritter? No, not Desmond Ritter, who Adam is a fan of. Howell. Howell. Um, oh, Adam Howell. doesn't like Howell. Pickett. Pickett, yeah, that's no, not going to happen. Yeah, no. Yeah, he's not, not even happen. that great. <laughs> if, if, and it's not, he's not going to fall that far. But, Malik has fallen that far yeah, in mock drafts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're all mock hypothetical. Drafts, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be both of the... Bo- Those are Malik warps. and and Pickett are going to be gone in the first 15 picks. And if uh, the difference between Malik Willis... And somebody that would be available at 32, like Sam Howell or Spencer Rattler, or I mean Desmond Ritter, or one of those guys, is way bigger than the difference between Hutch and Kayvon compared to Jermaine Johnson and Boye Mafe. Like those guys yeah. could easily be just as good as a Hutch or a Kayvon. They have similar, you know, builds, similar stats, similar projections, but. 
Malik is easily going to be the best quarterback out of all of those guys. Put it, put it to you this way. A report came out today from M. Schefter. Like, all teams in, like, the top five have been trying to trade out to trade back because the way they, they view the draft is exactly what Spencer said. Aiden Hutchinson's difference from him to Jermaine Johnson, who's probably, like, the fourth or fifth guy on the edge rusher list, is like this. You know saying they don't, they don't think – you're not missing on a generational talent if you're trading back or you take a quarterback because sure. these guys, this clump of guys, like pretty much the same caliber of talent in the eyes uh, of the scout. Now, sure, like one guy could stand out and just like any other draft does. Like J- TJ Watt was 32 pick and stuff like that. But like, yeah, that's the consensus of this draft, and that's why you're allowed to swing on a on a guy like Malik Willis because you're not passing up generational talent. Sure, you're passing up a group of guys. At the end, much the yeah. Same. At the end of the day, though, it's not for me. I do trust. Brad Holmes. Yes. yes. And so, so whatever he feels confident in doing, if yeah. you want to do you and you're going to be all in on that guy, be all in on that guy. Yeah. And I'll stand behind it. I trust Brad Holmes and I trust him to make the right decisions. But if they tell me they passed up on a quarterback because they believe in Jared Goff, I that's might not, lose. I don't think that those are words that are going to come out of anybody's mouth. Like they've said it they've before. Said it yeah, they, they said that they're not going to go for a quarterback in this draft. They said they Jared Goff's that. our guy. Yeah, and but I they mean, said shit like that. It's well, coach talk. Yeah, it's, but if that's my one they, fear, though, is that they do actually believe. Do in they this guy. say that he's their guy moving move, forward? But like for a year. No, they say no. They said that it's like like this is our guy. We we have yeah, confidence. We have confidence in Jared Goff. And I did pull up the stats like of of his second half of the season, and they are they are a lot better. Like there's not not too much you can bitch about outside of like. The fumbles, but even the last three games, again, that's a small ass sample size. To all the Jared Goffers out there, like three games compared to the fucking other yeah. eleven that he played. Yeah, they had each one had a fucking turnover, and like you could suck my dick. Yeah, don't try like give me that shit and say 107 QBR. QBR. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Matthew Stafford also had the against the against the Packers team. Yeah, the thing with so yes, that's definitely a thing. Stafford's on a fucking team of like all stars, though. I, I will say that, and the other difference is. Goff's turnovers aren't just like interceptions; they're also fumbles. Yeah, yeah. and got, Stafford's turnovers are him pushing the ball down the field mm-hmm. and somebody picking it off. Goff's Goff turnovers is literally are, taking a snap, fumbling snaps, fumbling fucking like yeah, like literally the Green Bay game. I play on my Twitter yeah. all the time. The fucking guy goes, he just loses the fucking ball. And like, hey, the, at least he that, knew that's the type of shit. At least he lined up behind the center. The hundred, unlike Kirk Cousins, who couldn't figure out where the center was. The hundred and two QBR thing was against like. The Arizona team that was defeated, that everybody quit on, that yeah. didn't even play. Look what they did in the first round of the playoffs. They lost like four straight games to end the season. Mm-hmm. They were awful. A Packers team that had half of their starters sitting. Mm-hmm. And you could afford to turn the and ball over. all when, of their starters sitting in the second half. You could afford to turn the ball over when you, on the other side of the ball, you have arguably the best defensive player of all time. Yeah. And Aaron Donald. Yes. Oh, and Jalen Ramsey. And Jalen Ramsey. Oh, and Von Miller. Yeah. Oh, and fucking Floyd. Like, and, come on. And now they got Owen oh, Bobby Wagner. Oh, and Bobby Wagner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eric Weddle coming out of retirement. He was, like, one of the better safeties when he played. So, like, there's a difference in that. But, like, yeah, the only thing that would make me question Brad Holmes, truthfully, honestly, if we come out of this draft without a – I can't say that. That's probably jumping the gun a little bit. But I definitely think we should address the quarterback at either – is it 2, 32, or 34? Like, the position needs to be addressed. Because I, you're not winning playing paying Jared Goff $30 million. Thanks. You're just not. There's never been a team in the history of the NFL who's won a Super Bowl paying their quarterback more than 13% of their salary cap and more than $23 million, which is Peyton Manning when he was added to that stacked Broncos team. It's just like, it's just not a fucking thing with Jared Goff's there. It's just not. Thanks. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that was it. That was yeah, the air's off, guys. So. Easy's easy, got to uh, easy, gotta record. He's oh, going yeah, live dude. for 15 minutes, 14 minutes. Yeah. Do it. You know, shout out Maddie. For ho- joining the show, having fun. Oh yeah, by the God, always loving ever around. <laughs> you Sh- better. He up. has to say that. Shout out Better Rate Mortgage <laughs> Studios one more time. Better Rate, shout them out. You need a home buying experience. Hit up Better Rate. They'll hook you guys up. Thank. Shout out to you guys for liking, listening, subscribing. We love you guys. Thanks Honest for God, the support. We wouldn't be shit without you guys. So thank you. Oh, Fact. Keep right. hitting the like button. Keep hitting that share button. Right. Be a friend. Tell a friend. <laughs> 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 Give me some ganja, 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 give